Hi everyone. Today we are going to look into auto prompt, eliciting knowledge from language models with automatically generated prompts. And um, this paper basically tries to do just that. Um, it tries to evaluate what has been learned by by the language model. So it's trying to elicit what knowledge has been learned by the language model. And um, there have been other methods in which you can do it. One would be uh, fine tuning, where you basically have the language model and then you fine tune it on a downstream task and here it becomes difficult to know what exactly the language model has learned versus what fine tuning has taught another method would be to use uh, shallow classifiers on top of your language model and um, you can then query certain attributes uh, which you are interested in but again this has the same problem you have additional parameters apart from the language model's parameters and becomes difficult to know what exactly the language model has learned and then you have another method uh, which is prompting where you basically um, phrase um, accurate accurate uh, prompts to the language model and the language model reveals what it has learned during its pre-training phase and um, so in prompting um, you have both uh, manual prompting these are just hard prompts which i'm talking about so as in the prompts are uh, words from a vocabulary right so um, you have um, the most popular method is manual prompting where um, you have an annotator basically design the prompts uh, particular to a task and uh, this again requires certain domain knowledge and uh, it's very brittle uh sometimes some prompts work with some models and they may not work with other models for the same task uh, we've seen this in the um we've seen this before where uh, it becomes very difficult to actually uh design a prompt for a particular task and um this paper uh, basically tries to design automated prompts using gradient based approaches so that uh, it alleviates some of the issues uh, faced in manual prompting So um so here is an illustration of what they basically do so in prompting generally you convert an input into a prompt uh by applying a particular template so here they have illustrated their method uh, for a sentiment classification task so um here the input is this string a real joy and then they convert it into a prompt by having the input and appending the input with a bunch of different trigger tokens right here it is atmosphere a lot dialogue clone totally and then they have a placeholder for what the language model is uh, going to generate right and they feed this into the language model mass language model so in prompting you can see that um, the input is basically converted into a format which the language model has already seen during its pre training right and um, and now you're basically looking into the different um words which are generated by the language model right um in in um, problems or in tasks such as uh, sentiment classification you have uh, there could be multiple tokens which are associated with a particular label right there are only two labels positive and negative and you could have like here in this example they show that chris marvelous and philanthrope all these are associated with a positive label and uh, worse incompetence and worse are associated with the negative label so they add the probabilities associated with the tokens with associated with the positive label and those tokens which are uh, relevant to the negative label okay right? um and then they finally uh, are able to given the prompt they are able to uh, predict whether it is a positive class or it is a negative class so that's exactly what you see in equation 1 here so here you have a bunch of words which belong to a particular class now these tokens uh, in the earlier example it was chris and marvelous um and uh, for the negative class it was worse and incompetent so um you basically add up the probabilities which of the words given the prompt and these words are predicted by the language model right now how do they do the um automated prompt generation right the trigger tokens so 
the example which was cited before was a real joy and then you have a bunch of trigger tokens let's just call it t1 t2 t3 and then you have a mask right and uh, this mask is what it's a placeholder for the language model to generate a word right so now what they do is uh, and they initialize these trigger tokens with mask and then they um, learn what these trigger tokens should be so the basic goal of this paper is to automatically come up with words corresponding to the trigger tokens t1 t2 and t3 so the way they do that is they they take the gradient of the log likelihood of a particular class label given the prompt and um, when you do that you get gradient vectors for each of these trigger tokens t1 t2 and t3 and um, these gradient vectors are in the continuous space so you need to map them back to discrete space and you do that by taking a dot product or computing the similarity of these gradient vectors with the words in your embedding matrix right that's what they do here and then they take the top k prompts right so earlier we saw um, clone totally a lot this could be one set of uh, trigger tokens another set could be sky blue etc right um so then what they do is to basically pick one prompt uh, they plug it back into equation 1 here and see uh, which set of trigger tokens when plugged into the prompt give you the maximum probability and they pick those in the next section they address how do you map tokens to a particular label right so earlier we said we had a bunch of different tokens like say worse and incompetence these were associated with the negative class so how do you map these into negative class so for this they use a logistic classifier so um, this part is not super clear but what i understand is um, they take the um, mask tokens representation right so you have your input a real joy and um, you have mask right so this is from a supervised data set so you already have a sentiment which is associated with it right so they are going to uh, look at the representation for mask right and they are going to just take the contextualized representation for mask and learn a logistic classifier learn the weights of a logistic classifier right and then what they do is once they learn the weights of it they are then going to plug in words which are generated by the language model so this mask uh, if you feed this vector into a linear classifier and then you take um, the maximum probability of the word which is generated by the transformer that would correspond to a a particular word we we'll call it w out right they say there is a very high um, correlation between w out and h of the mask so now what you can do with your logistic classifier is you could plug in a word and then get the probability of a particular class so uh, you can plug in like chris could be one word and then get the probability of the positive and basically predict y whether it is positive or negative right and um, and and you do this and you get the top k words for a particular class label right so for positive words you could get some top 10 to 20 words tokens which are associated with it and for negative class you can again have 10 to 20 tokens which are associated with it right and that's how you determine which tokens are associated with which class right and they basically have some uh, details on uh, how many um, top k what is the value of k for the candidates and uh, what is the value of k for uh, the class labels and how many trigger tokens they experiment with and uh, they evaluate this on different tasks and uh, here are some examples of it um, so sentiment analysis we have already seen before you have the sentence you have a bunch of trigger tokens and then you have a placeholder for the predicted token and uh, here's an example unflinchingly bleak and desperate and they have trigger tokens which appear here and then they have a mask and um, for the positive class they found that partnership extraordinary and blah were most likely associated with this and negative class they found worse persisted unconstitutional associated with the negative class and then they also try on natural language inference 
where you have the premise, you have a placeholder for a predicted token by the language model and you have a bunch of trigger tokens and you have a hypothesis and uh, the goal is uh, basically to predict this predicted token and then map it to a particular class uh, indicating contradiction, entailment or neutrality and um, you see a bunch of different tokens which are associated with each class, right? top k tokens. And then you have uh, two other tasks which don't require this mapping of the tokens to a particular label. Um, those are fact retrieval where you're basically checking the facts which are learnt by the language model. And um, here, for example, it's X plays Y music. So you have the subject, you have a bunch of trigger tokens and then you have the object. And um, here you don't have this scenario where you're mapping multiple tokens into one class. And then um, you have another which is relation extraction. So here they've given an example of X is a Y by profession. So uh, Leonard Wood is a former Canadian politician, Leonard Wood, and then you're, I assume, want to, pre want to predict politician, right? And um, you're, you're supposed to extract that from this text. So these are the tasks which they try and they report their results on it. Um, so for sentiment analysis, they compare their method with uh, fine tuning and uh, with linear probing and they uh, use two different models, Bert and Roberta. And um, they also compare their method with uh, the most, uh, co the most um, relevant baseline here would be manual prompting, right? Uh, they compare it with manual prompting and they see that they, are, they, are, they do perform much better compared to manual prompting. And um, I'd say it's almost comparable with uh, linear probing for BERT and um, it's uh, better than linear probing for Roberta. So uh, that's that basically demonstrates that you can use this auto prompt method for uh, sentiment classification. And then um, they show it on NLI, natural language inference. And uh, here they again compare it with fine tuning and uh, linear probing, but um, it's uh, it's not on par with those. So uh, maybe these methods are better, but they say it's better than the majority baseline. Not very clear with what this majority baseline is. And um, and then they have this factual retrieval, right, where you have to basically retrieve facts which the language model has learned and uh, they find that uh, the auto prompt method is better compared to the, they call these as a prompting types, they are better than this, uh, these other two prompting types. And uh, you can also see that uh, there's not much difference between five tokens and seven tokens, they are almost comparable. So uh, just five tokens are enough to, uh, five trigger tokens are enough to generate the prompt. And then they also do relation extraction and they compare it with uh, prompting techniques such as LAMA and um, LPAQA. And then they also have uh, an LSTM which is specifically uh, learning to do relation extraction and they find that they are way better than that and um, they are actually uh, better than the other methods as well. And they have this interesting experiment where they perturb the uh, input. So relation extraction requires some sort of um, understanding of the context to be able to extract the relation, right? You're extracting something from the text. So they give an example of the perturbation they perform. So let's say, for example, the input text is uh, Rayo Kase, born in um, November 9, 1974 in Yokohoma, Yorkshire, is a Japanese actor. So, um, so if you remove, if you basically change Yokohoma to Yorkshire, right, uh, you shouldn't be able to kind of extract the detail that it, he is a Japanese actor. And you, you, you would assume that if you're trying to evaluate your model on that, uh, the performance basically should go down, right? And that's what we see happening in these prompting methods, saying that um, these models are trying to um, basically just not memorize uh, your pre-training corpus, but rather sort of pay attention to the prompt and then give an output, right? 
But then if you look at the uh, model which was just um, trained to predict relation extraction, um, you see that the performance has not really gone down much. And then they um, have some discussion on um, on their method and they say you can view it as an alternative to fine tuning. Again, um, uh, this, these, this prompting method is like really good in the low data regime. I think they have some experiments to uh, justify that. So here you can see that uh, they, they experiment with 10, 100 and 1000 training samples only and then they uh, look at the performance. So in the low data regime, you can see that uh, auto prompt is sort of better than fine tuning in some cases. Um, and uh, for Roberta on the NLI data set, you can see that uh, the performance is uh, good for auto prompt even when you have like thousand examples. So in the low data regime, it's, it's useful to use uh, auto prompt it can perform better than uh, fine tuning, right? So, and, and again, you know, you solve many of the problems which are associated with fine tuning and that is it's mo much more efficient to do prompting. You don't have to save these uh, language model checkpoints um, for a particular task, right? You just have to learn what kind of prompts are good for a particular task and then that is good enough. And then, um, they then discuss the limitations of prompting as such, right? Um, and and th this is general prompting. And um, this seems to be uh, dependent um, with the data set which you're using. So uh, you wouldn't be able to use prompting on all different data sets. You need to uh, pick and choose which data sets prompting would work on, right? And then, um, then they focus on the limitations of auto prompt and um, one of the major limitations is they are not interpretable at all, right? So if you looked at what what kind of prompts were generated earlier, you saw a real joy, and then you had something like clone, totally, atmosphere, etc., which are not related to the input sentence, nor are they related to the task at hand, which is sentiment classification. So uh, although you do a mapping from the continuous space of these gradient vectors into um, discrete space of tokens in your vocabulary, you see that there's um, this lack of interpretability, right? So um, that's one of the major limitations. But, um, but again, it performs better than manual prompts, saying that probably the language model doesn't really care about uh, human interpretable prompts but rather um, it, it works fine even with a bunch of different words which are strung together and um, yeah the main takeaway of this paper is um, if you are considering prompting then um, for a particular data set and for a particular task uh, you should be thinking of auto prompting as one of the methods it may work and um, it basically has advantages of a manual prompt as in uh, the performance is generally better and um, you may have you and it is basically driven by a gradient based approach so there's very less effort involved in designing a prompt and when you have very few samples in your um, task specific data set it, it may even perform better than fine tuning so uh, that those would be good reasons to give auto prompt a chance.